Once you are familiar with the recommended pre-installation planning and gate preparation explained in the overview, you are ready to install the SW2000 XLS swing gate operator. Refer to the installation manual to be sure you have all the tools you will need and any extra materials specific to the gate system you are installing. We will use a pull to open installation as the example in this video. The gate operator is installed with the gate in its fully open position with the operator arm fully retracted. This position is the open limit. Conversely, on a push to open gate, the gate operator is installed on the gate in its closed position with the operator arm fully retracted. This position is the closed limit. For specific information on push to open installations, refer to the installation manual. The post bracket assembly's position determines the leverage of the opener, as well as the clearance between the opener and the gate. With the post and gate brackets attached to the operator arm and the operator arm level, temporarily clamp the brackets to the gate and gate post. Check to be sure you have a minimum of 2 inches of clearance between the gate and the gate operator. You may need to adjust the pivot bracket to get the proper clearance. Remove the hairpin clip, clevis pin, and bushing from the front mount and gate bracket and close the gate while supporting the opener. Never allow the opener to hang from the post bracket assembly. Visually align the opener with the gate bracket to see if there will be 2 inches of clearance when the gate is closed. At the same time, check to be sure that the distance between the ends of the retracted opener arm and the gate bracket is more than 7 inches but less than 15 inches. If necessary, rotate the post pivot bracket to a position that will give the required clearance and stroke while still allowing one of the post pivot bracket holes to line up with a post bracket hole. You can also turn the post pivot bracket over to give you more adjustment options. When the optimum mounting position is finalized, permanently install the brackets using the hardware provided. Proper clearance, leverage, and stroke are critical to a trouble-free installation. With the gate in its closed position, install the stop plate on the end of the gate so it comes in contact with the gate post. Different types of gates will require different mounting hardware. Now return the gate to the open position and attach the operator arm to the secured brackets. The battery box and control box must be mounted at least 3 feet above the ground to protect it from rain splash and snow and at least 3 feet away from an AC power source to prevent electrical interference. Separate the control box from the battery box and mount the battery box to a secure surface. Use flush mount hardware to mount the battery box. Other hardware may prevent the battery from fitting properly in the box. Place the 12 volt battery into the battery box with the terminals at the top. Connect the battery harness wires to the two wires coming through the back of the control box, red to red and black to black, and reattach the control box to the battery box. Remove the control box cover and insert the opener power cable through the appropriate strain relief slot on the control box. Attach stripped power cable wires into the terminals on the first opener terminal block. Refer to the installation manual for more information. Sixteen gauge dual conductor stranded direct burial wire is required to connect the transformer or the solar panel to the control board. Wire coming up to the control box from the ground should be routed through PVC conduit to protect it from lawn mowers, weed eaters, or animals. Any outdoor outlets used must be enclosed in weatherproof housings. You must use either the AC transformer or solar panels to continually charge the system's battery, but never use both. Doing so will damage the system. Attach the transformer or solar wires to the control board terminals labeled 14 VAC or solar. With the gate in the open position and the arm attached, turn the control box power switch to on. Press and hold the first opener jog close button on the control board and release when the gate reaches the desired closed position. Use the jog open and jog close buttons to fine tune if necessary. When the gate is in the desired closed position, press and hold the set limit button until the alarm and red light come on. Release the button. Now press the transmitter button and allow the gate to fully open. The alarm will beep once and the red light will go out when the gate reaches the open limit. Press the transmitter button again and allow the gate to close to verify that it stops at the desired position. Repeat the process if necessary.
The stall force potentiometer controls the amount of force the opener will apply against an obstruction before it stops and reverses direction. This setting will need to be adjusted to compensate for the weight and size of your gates. Use a small flat blade screwdriver to adjust the stall force sensitivity just to the point where the gates operate smoothly without obstructing from their own weight or wind conditions. For safety reasons, use the lowest setting possible to operate the gates. The factory setting for the auto close is off. You can adjust the auto close time to off or from 3 to 120 seconds. You can override the auto close setting by pressing the transmitter button to make the gates close immediately. All GTO transmitters have a standard factory setting and are ready to operate the gate opener. For security and safety, we strongly recommend replacing the factory setting with a personal setting. Open the transmitter and set the dip switches into different positions for your personal setting. Do not set all of the switches in the same position. Once the dip switches have been set, replace the cover. If you have multiple transmitters, set the dip switches the same at this time. To program the new code, slide the control box on-off switch to the off position. Press and hold the transmitter button while sliding the switch to the on position. Continue to hold the transmitter button until the alarm sounds. When you are through with the installation, replace the control box cover and install the receiver antenna using the screw provided. Attach the warning signs included with the installation package to both sides of the gate. Automatic gate openers produce high levels of force and it is your responsibility to post warnings. Be sure you explain all the safety instructions to the homeowner and leave the installation manual for future reference. It contains safety guidelines, installation information, and troubleshooting tips. Visit the GTO Access Systems website at gtoaccess.com to access online resources such as our troubleshooting wizard and information about GTO products and accessories.